Hey guys, welcome back to Foreign Reacts. Today we're gonna be checking out a video that um, it's really similar to some of the other ones I've checked check, uh, checked out in the past, but um, this one is titled "If You Were uh, If You Were an American Living Abroad, Tell Me Why You Would Never Go Back." So obviously they're saying why you would never go back to America. This is a really interesting one, personally for me. I don't really know anything about the European countries as it goes as far as uh, business wise and. Um, that's a very important thing for me and that's one of the main reasons why america is so important to me because of the business section of it and um, i'm not really sure about how it goes in the european countries and that's going to be a whole lot of education for me aside from me learning about the culture and all of that so that's one major reason why i could tell you that i would return right so we're gonna see what these folks have to say so without further ado guys let's get right into the video please do subscribe and uh enjoy your time here at foreign reacts where we do only foreign reaction everything done here has to be foreign to the reactor and that's who i am so let's get right into this video guys if you're an american living abroad please tell me why Dang. Would never go back. I no longer have to budget for my health when something's <laughs> wrong with my body. I was gonna say, dang, she's not loud, but then loud comes in. <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm not being rude. I'm loud sometimes, but yeah. Body or I have a concern, I don't have to wait until I can afford it. I just go get it checked immediately. When the doctor right. says, hey, I'd like you to have these tests done, or hey, I would like you to go see this specialist, I no longer have to say, and how much will that cost? 500. I don't have to do that. I would like to have a baby eventually, and when I do eventually give birth, that's not going to wreck me financially. In the US, it's anywhere between eight to 11,000 to give birth, sometimes after your deductible. I mean, they're charging people to hold their own babies. Get out of here. In France, we do not Get live to work, we work to live. We have a 35 hour work week, and it's actually illegal for your boss to send you an email outside of working hours. My company gives me ticket resto, which is money that I can use every month for my meals or for my groceries, and it really adds up. I have 25 days vacation plus 11 RTT days, so that's 35 days, excuse me, 36 days total um, for time off plus national holidays. And it is encouraged to take your vacation time. In fact, in the month of August, almost the whole country just fucks off to the south of France. Like you will send an email to someone and your response will be, hey, out of office until September 1st, enjoy your summer. My cell phone bill is 15 bucks a month and my Wi-Fi is 20 bucks a month. Rent <sighs> is so much cheaper here. I'm living in the dead How center much? of Paris and I pay the same right now as I did for my How apartment much? outside of Boston in Malden. How Landlords much? Landlords cannot say no to you just because you have a cat or a dog. They're not allowed to. Why does nobody talk about that? That's what? That, 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 that's important. That is important. I don't know how she's talking for this long, but she's covering some really important points. The rent, you cannot be denied. In America, you can very much be... Bro, you could be paying $2,000 a month for um, rent in America, depending on where you're... $2,000 is a decent place, um, right? And... You pay two thousand dollars, and you gotta have a like a a, a a a separate rent for your dog or your cat, like for real, for real, for real, like legitimately. You gotta do that. So she's talking about some real life things that a lot of people who are Americans who are living abroad they don't cover that. They only cover the free stuff, the healthcare, and all of that stuff. But these are some very strong points, man. If you want to buy a home, interest rates are one percent. There's a program called CAF. It's for students. I never used it, but. If you're a student, the government will give you money every month to help pay for your rent between like four and six hundred, which is really cool. The food is actual food and it's not filled with garbage. And as a result, garbage. there's not really like an obesity this. pandemic here. There aren't really guns. And guys, please do not get offended when I said garbage. It's just me just having fun. Y'all, I've seen a lot of comments, man. This dude is mocking these people. I'm not mocking them. I just love how they sound. And I, I, I do things. If, if I think something is stupid or pathetic, I'm not going to follow it. Don't get it twisted. If I like it and I like the twist to it, I'm going to say it. It's not mocking. Mocking is making fun of. I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm just enjoying and I'm pretty sure they would not think I'm mocking them because I'm laughing with them, not at them. There's a difference. Here and we don't have school shootings or gang shootings. Because the drinking age is lower, most people start drinking at a young age, but like in a chill setting. So there's less alcohol related deaths and people don't drink to get wasted like we do in the US. Like it's more civilized. Oh, okay. I love being surrounded by people who are different than me. I'm learning new perspectives every single day, being humbled every single day. Um, and it's just awesome to be in a completely different culture and like actually it. surviving here. Plus, I can fly to other countries so easily and affordably, which is awesome. I couldn't do that in the US. I just love it here. I'm not going back. <laughs> oh God, where to bloody start? 
blood. I'm a US American here who's been living in Spain for the last three years, and I actually get asked this question a lot, especially when I was in the States earlier this year. A lot of people ask me, will you ever move back? Short answer, absolutely fucking not. First, the healthcare here is incredibly cheap. I am not yet a permanent resident, so I don't qualify for the free healthcare. Uh, so I have to pay for healthcare through private insurance, and it costs me less than 1,000 US dollars a year for full coverage, including dental, no copays, nothing. The second thing is the overall lifestyle here is so much healthier. The food is much better quality. People go out for walks every day and people also prioritize their lives over their work. Jobs. People here work to live. They don't live to work. Second person Not saying that. It's a multilingual country and people tend to be a lot more tolerant of other cultures. I have more if you want to hear it. Uh, this goes without saying and I'm sure many, many other uh, foreigners or Americans especially have said the same thing, but safety. Uh, both as a woman, as a parent, and as someone who has lots and lots of friends, and those friends have also children who are considered minorities. I don't fear for my life. What I country, fear though? For my children's lives. And country. I don't feel for my fear for my friends and their, kids? their children's lives. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a huge one for me. Very huge. Uh, another one is it is so much more family oriented here. Anywhere you go, anything you do, there's always something that is just family oriented. The workforce here is a lot better. Uh, the health care is, is way better. Um, and the food. The food. Okay, so not an American, I'm a Canadian, but these are the reasons why I couldn't move back home. First up, no surprise, winter is a bitch. My mood is super dictated by the seasons and I need sun to be happy. Basically means I get like 60 days of good happiness Understandable. In Next up is I would miss beaches way too much. Toronto obviously doesn't really have many beaches. This is like the closest thing called Hamlin's Point and it's a place you can swim on the island. The water's a bit polluted. Some people swim in it. Personally, I have a no holes rule so I only go up to it to my knees. And I definitely couldn't go back to having only 10 days holiday. In Canada and America, you get about two weeks holiday on average. In Australia, you get four weeks, which you can even get up to five weeks if you've been at a company long enough. So I'm sorry, Australia it is. I am an American living in Saudi Arabia and I left America 20 years ago and I haven't gone back once, um, not for a visit. And simple reason is that I haven't had a compelling reason to make me go back because I would not voluntarily go back ever. Since being here in Turkey, the only thing that I've had to worry about is my education. And in America, wow. that is a privilege to worry about college while you are in college. When I was living in New Jersey, I was worried about rent, groceries, working two part-time jobs, right. and other things that I should not have to worry about as a college student taking a full-time load of classes. Like just yesterday, my roommate wasn't feeling well and her professor picked her up and took her to the doctor and then went to the pharmacy to get her medicine and then read the label and translated it in English so she knows what she's taking. I feel like in America that really wouldn't happen. Like some professors really just don't really care if you pass your classes, let alone are you doing well physically. And I'm an exchange student, so I have to come back at some point, but like I don't plan on living in America forever. I'm responding to the stitch, if you were an American living abroad, that is me. Why would you never go back to the United States? I will put the original creator in the comments. So there's a lot to talk about. Let's just do a speed round. Affordable healthcare. I literally went to the doctor the other day and only paid seven euros for a doctor's appointment. And if I wasn't insured, this only would have cost me 20 euros. In the US with insurance, that would have cost me at least 30 bucks. I'm not afraid of my students pulling out a gun at the university where I work. It's <laughs> not explanatory. The food. Sick days are not the same thing as vacation days. You're allowed to be sick. A full-time job here is 35 hours a week as opposed to 40 plus. You are not expected to answer work emails or do work after hours or on the weekends. The government offers financial assistance to decrease the amount of your rent if you make a low enough income. Tenants here have rights. I could break my lease and not face any financial consequences. Just in general, there's way more vacation days. Things like climate change are not up for debate. In general, people here are just way more sustainably conscious. For example, if you go to the grocery store, everybody's just expected to have their own bags, and if you don't have your own bag, then you have to pay for one. And finally, public transportation here is way more reliable, at least in Paris. So yeah, if I can help it, I'm never going back to the US. I liked hers. I liked hers a lot because the transitions that she put with it, it was really actually amazing. Um, but I do agree with her, you know, <clears throat> I've never obviously been to Europe before and I have plans, but, you know, um, public transportation, I've never been a, a big fan of it. I, in America, I use it a lot 
due to me being broke and poor and I'm suffering, you know, so I, I use it a lot because I, I don't have that money to buy a car and I'm poor. So I use it a lot because it's cheaper, but let me tell you, it is not convenient at all. And it is horrible. It's not clean. It's, uh, let me not just get into details of all the transportation in America. And it's really, really limited because I, the majority of Americans will not use a public transportation. So it's really limited. Okay, no hate to this creator whatsoever. I'm actually going to answer this question in another stitch. I'll put that in the comments so you can find it. But I do quickly want to point out three different privileges that come along with this question. Number one, huge reason why I'm able to live in France long term is because of my U.S. American passport. So yeah, I don't want to go back to the U.S., but being from the U.S. is a huge reason why I'm able to leave in the first place. Correct. Second point, there are a ton of people in the United States who are from the United States who have the U.S. American passport who still are not able to leave even if they want to. And my third and final point, there are a ton of people all around the world who are trying to get to the United States. Oftentimes they will be going through an excruciatingly long process in order to just make it there. Often that process never comes to fruition. Some people can't even apply in the first place. So I don't say all of this to prevent any critiques towards the US. There's a lot to critique. But I do just want to make sure that I'm being mindful of the privileges that come along with being a US American citizen. Yeah, Especially like, one that doesn't- Personally for me, I don't like, when it comes to America, all respect to America will always have my respect, but the only uh, places that I would compare to America would have been uh, the uh, European countries. Why? Because I think those are uh, uh, well-aged uh, first world countries and they have the credibility to uh, be compared to America. America has very much a lot of privileges that I don't know if the European countries have, but there's a lot of things that being in America makes it a lot more easier for you because stuff like cash app um cash app paypal stuff like that they're easier to be um used in america very much so right so a lot of things are way more you know easier accessible in america in my humble opinion and personally like i've said cash app and um zelle and such like those right they're very much more accessible in america right so a lot of things are just in America and there's, they spread them to the world eventually. So there is a lot of privileges in America and I would never be that guy to try to downplay America. Like I've only said, the healthcare in America, the safety in America and um, healthcare safety. And I think that's about it. Like, even though the rent is not the best, I think you can get by as long as you're doing what you're, what you're supposed to do. And um, the education system is not the best. So I think I'll go three things, healthcare, education, and safety. Those are the things that America really is really weak in. And it's really hard for them to grow in it. Like I said, 329 million people. It's not easy to control all that people have a safe country while having a great economy and spreading that money out evenly. It's not, right? So it's it. America has its benefits. I don't want to go back. Healthcare. I've lived abroad now wow. for, I think, going on 12 years. I've lived in South Korea, Australia, Colombia, and now in Germany. And without a doubt, the number one reason I still live abroad is healthcare. I have several chronic health conditions, including asthma. And here in Germany, I get my inhalers, my albuterol for free, yeah, which was like yeah, mind yeah. blowing when that first yeah, happened, when yeah. I was living, I think, in Korea at the time. Um, but yeah, I get my inhalers for free. I, as a master's student here, I paid 85 euro a month for comprehensive health insurance. And during that time, I also had an experimental ear surgery. Um, I had a very severe ear air issue, which is very rare. Um, and yeah, I had an experimental surgery and I got an apology letter from my health insurance, apologizing that I had to pay 10 euro for staying an extra night in the hospital. Well 10 euro. They well apologized. Said. Well said. Well said. That's it. If you're an American living in We're not done? Oh, don't. we're done. <laughs> but yeah, that's the point, guys. It, like I said, there are issues with America, but it's not like America's hell. America's not hell. America's a beautiful place, and it will always be in my heart forever, 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 right? So um, it's not a bad place. It's just that there are, it's unfortunately having 329 million people, it's not easy to have everybody orderly and uh, in a safe place. Um, it's it's just not easy with the healthcare system. You know they're trying to milk everything out financially. You know reasons 
won't say those, but obviously such and such and such and such. So it's not for everybody. It's for some people, not for everybody. And the lesser countries, lesser countries like the ones that are not like the European countries, they would seek to go to America because it would be better for them, right? So um, you, you get the point. Europeans are not the, the ones who are going to mainly go to America. They'll visit, but I don't think they'll try to live there because no, you have everything that you need over there in Europe uh, easily. But either ways, guys, that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm out of here. Peace. Oh,